On May 12, 1943, in the perilous Atlantic waters, Kriegsmarine submarine U-456 vanished with all hands on deck. This opened up a mystery for the Third Reich, who that month suffered unprecedented U-boat losses. Little did they know that a silent predator, a liberator under the command of RAF Flight Lieutenant John Wright, had soared through the skies, armed with an enigmatic weapon, the Allies' best-kept secret. Nicknamed Fido for its dogged determination, this American-made creation was so covert that its use was confined to the deep open waters of the Atlantic to prevent it from running ashore. The directive was clear. Release it only after a U-boat had dived or was diving with the conning tower hatch closed to keep the enemy from ever spotting this secret weapon. Only after the war did Germany discover what was behind their submarine's downfall. At the onset of World War II, with the emerging threat of the ever-feared German U-boat, United States Navy leadership found themselves confronted with shortcomings in their submarine-launched torpedoes. The branch's arsenal heavily relied on models like the Mark 10 and Mark 14, but they had two significant issues, depth control and exploder mechanisms. The most critical issue was depth control. Submarines launched torpedoes that often ran too deep or shallow, missing their targets or passing harmlessly beneath enemy ships. Additionally, the unreliable exploder mechanisms in these torpedoes meant that even on target hits, there was no guarantee of detonation, leading to submariners' frustration and at times disastrous consequences for Allied ships and crews. While the United States struggled to target enemy ships accurately, the German Navy had already made significant advancements in developing acoustic homing torpedoes, capable of precisely tracking and striking their intended targets. Kriegsmarine submarines were equipped with homing torpedoes and G7E T5 Zonkönig as early as 1933. But while they were effective against surface vessels, they could not track and adjust to changes in both depth and horizontal direction, making them less effective against submarines. The need to counter these advanced German acoustic torpedoes prompted the United States Naval Defense Research Committee to take action before it was too late for the Allies. In late 1941, the Naval Defense Research Committee sponsored a large, multi-organization research and development project to develop an aircraft-launched torpedo that used acoustics to pursue a target. To mislead German intelligence, NDRC leaders codenamed the project FIDO, using mine instead of torpedo, symbolizing the weapon's relentless pursuit of target submarines. This reclassification as the Mark 24 mine, according to physicist Harvey Brooks, also expedited the project by bypassing the already burdened torpedo specialists. This new torpedo had specific requirements that guided its design. It needed to be an anti-submarine weapon that could be dropped from an aircraft from 200 to 300 feet at a speed of about 120 knots. Additionally, it had to fit within a 1,000-pound bomb rack. For Project Fido, four separate entities were involved in the design. The first and most crucial to the success was the collaboration with scientists from the Harvard Underwater Sound Laboratory, or HUSL, including notable scientists like Dr. Ted Hunt, Dr. Eric Walker, and Dr. Paul Boner. Their acoustic research and innovations ensured that FIDO torpedoes could reliably hit their targets and explode upon impact, unlike the torpedo predecessors. Simultaneously, Bell Telephone Laboratories also played a significant role in the development of the Mark 24. They were responsible for crucial components, such as the guidance system that allowed the torpedo to home in on its target using acoustic signals. The other two collaborators were General Electric on the electric propulsion motor and the David Taylor model basin responsible for the shell design. By then, all parties agreed that the project to develop a homing torpedo as fast as they could was of the utmost importance. The physical design of FIDO included modifications to an existing Mark 13 aerial torpedo. These changes included shortening the hull, reducing diameter and weight, and introducing a specialized nose section to accommodate the explosive charge. The result was a compact weapon measuring 19 inches in diameter, 7 feet in length, and weighing 680 pounds, featuring a 92-pound HBX warhead. General Electric provided an off-the-shelf 7.5 horsepower commercial washing machine motor for propulsion, which proved to be a perfect fit for Fido's underwater needs. While designing Mark 24, the acoustic aspect posed a unique challenge, especially as underwater acoustics technology was still in its infancy. The torpedo's guidance system was a collaboration between Bell Labs and Harvard Underwater Sound Laboratory. It combined Bell Labs' proportional navigation with Harvard's non-proportional steering system. 
this level of precision ensured remarkable accuracy in hitting its intended targets. FIDO's guidance system relied on passive acoustic homing. It utilized four strategically placed hydrophones around the midsection of the torpedo, connected to a vacuum tube-based sound processing array. This system allowed FIDO to listen for the sounds of submerged submarines. The urgency of the situation drove scientists and engineers to work around the clock, and impressively, the team developed the first Mark 24 torpedo for testing in only nine months. In contrast, current torpedoes take up to 15 years from concept to production. As FIDAR progressed rapidly, in June 1942, the U.S. Navy decided to kickstart torpedo production, even with substantial testing still ahead, including airdrop trials. This bold choice would prove to bear fruit. The inaugural firing of the Mark 24 torpedo, orchestrated by each USL scientists, unfolded on the anniversary of Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1942. In a tense moment, FIDO aced its test against a simulated target. Initial torpedo trials kicked off along the New England coast late in 1942, followed by further tests in the waters of Key West, Florida. Bell Labs took the lead in producing the initial Mark 24 torpedoes dispatched to the Navy, arriving for the first time in March 1943. With FIDO now ready for action, it was time to put it to the ultimate test in the treacherous waters of the North Atlantic. The first production Mark 24 units began to enter service in March 1943, with several Allied forces, including the United States Navy, the British Royal Air Force, and Canadian forces. On May 12th, German U-456 was operating in the North Atlantic, north of the Azores, looking for Allied ships to raid and destroy, when a Royal Air Force consolidated B-24 Liberator circled ahead of a convoy and the pilot spotted the surfaced submarine. The heavy bomber, part of the Coastal Command of 86th Squadron, approached the U-boat, and the submarine quickly dove, but not before the aircraft launched the new American FIDO acoustic homing torpedo at her. Once it hit the water, FIDO began circling at a set depth, controlled by its unique system developed only months before. It kept circling until its sensors picked up a certain level of submarine noise, at which point it started homing in on the sound to find its Kriegsmarine target. Upon detecting U-456, it swiftly zeroed in and hit the submarine with pinpoint accuracy. The aircraft waited a few minutes, and a brownish patch appeared on the ocean. The U-boat, now badly damaged, was forced to resurface and took off at a high speed. The Liberator dropped depth charges that missed the submarine, and low on fuel, could not press home the attack. At 11.30 a.m., U-456's commander, Max Martin Tyhert, sent a distress call to U-boat headquarters that read, quote, I am not clear for diving. Aircraft is keeping contact. Urgently request help. 21 minutes later, bad leak in after compartment. Need help urgently. Another U-boat was ordered to assist, but it was sunk before it could reach U-456. Following this initial attack, the British destroyer HMS Opportune joined the fight to counter U-456. For their part, the United States Navy scored its first U-boat two days later when a PBY Catalina from Patrol Squadron 24 sank U-640. May of 1943 became known as Black May for the Germans. 41 U-boats were sunk, and 37 were damaged, many of these thanks to Mark 24s. Over the next two years, U.S. and Allied aircraft launched hundreds of FIDOs against Kriegsmarine U-boats. The advent of the long-range Liberator bombers provided air cover into the Mid-Atlantic, where German wolf packs often waited for convoys. One key aspect was kept under wraps throughout this time, the torpedo's relatively modest speed. This was a deliberate choice by the Allies, because although U-boats could not outrun the torpedo when submerged, they could outrun it on the surface. This feature was part of FIDO's strategic design, ensuring a higher probability of hitting the mark while keeping the enemy in the dark about its capabilities. Throughout its use, the directive on the torpedo specified that it could only be employed after the target submarine had submerged. This tactic would keep the Germans from realizing that this was a target-seeking weapon. Enemy submarines were fired upon, forcing them to submerge. Fido was dropped at the froth of the dive spot and homed in on the sound of the propellers to damage the submarine. A second torpedo was sometimes dropped to complete the job. Depth charges had a 9.5 success rate in sinking a U-boat, while FIDO had a 22% success rate. The only failures of these torpedoes occurred due to improper deployment and tactics. 
The remarkable success of the Mark 24 torpedo in the Atlantic waters spurred the U.S. Navy to explore further and adapt its acoustic homing technology. This initiative was first discussed at a conference on November 23, 1943, when the National Defense Research Committee was urged to modify the Mark 24 for submarine use against small surface vessels. Initially, the idea was to launch this torpedo using compressed air from a submarine's torpedo tube. However, it was soon decided that the weapon should exit the tube under its own propulsion for tactical advantages. Bell Labs had transformed the Mark 24 into a new submarine launch torpedo prototype in only a month. The Mark 27, nicknamed Cutie, retained the acoustic homing abilities of its predecessor, but came with a slightly extended body to house a larger warhead and was equipped with wooden rails, enabling it to fit into a standard 21-inch torpedo tube. With a cruising speed of 12 knots and a maximum range of 5,000 yards, the Mark 27 significantly expanded the operational scope and effectiveness of the acoustic homing torpedo. Between June 1944 and April 1945, Western Electric manufactured and delivered 1,100 units of the Mark 27 Model Zero. The QD didn't see service in the United States Navy submarines until late in 1944 in the Pacific Theater. Although just three submarines launched a mere seven QDs, four of those successfully hit their targets, an impressive success rate. According to the book U.S. Navy Torpedoes by Frederick Milford, the Allies used the torpedoes to sink a total of 37 submarines, 31 by United States aircraft and the rest by other forces. The Mark 24 was also used against the Imperial Navy, sinking five Japanese submarines. In total, Fido sinkings were responsible for approximately 15% of all German submarines sunk by aircraft during World War II, an especially high number considering the weapon was only deployed in the final two years of the war. Originally, the NDRC ordered a staggering 10,000 Mark 24 torpedoes. However, the Mark 24 airdropped anti-submarine weapon would prove to be so devastatingly accurate against U-boats in the Atlantic and Pacific that the order was scaled down to 4,000 torpedoes. After the end of World War II, the Navy, reluctant to lose its bright scientific technology base, asked Dr. Walker, one of the HUSL scientists, to take about 100 engineers, scientists, and technicians with him. Dr. Walker formed the Ordnance Research Lab, today known as the Applied Research Lab, in 1945 at Penn State University to continue the acoustic torpedo research programs. This team of scientists would become responsible for conceiving and developing many successful American torpedoes over the years, including the Mark 48, Mark 37, Mark 50, and more. <laughs>